everyone. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Ivanhoe, and I'm the new yoga director at USC. Uh, and this is our first ever yoga at home. Um, I wanted to create a practice uh, that was really designed specially for uh, the USC community, um, uh, how to navigate and just deal with life in, in this uh, during COVID and the quarantine and stay at home and everyone's feeling really stuck. Um, I felt like now more than ever, even if you weren't a yoga person, even if you weren't a fitness person, now is the moment to just at least try to move a little bit and and get a little something going. So many people are going, oh, well, when this thing is all over, well, then I'll get back to yoga or then I'll get in shape or then I'll move. Um, and it's here for the foreseeable future. So this class is going to be a very entry level, very user friendly, uh, just designed to just kind of get us from being stuck on our sofas to doing a little bit of movement and hopefully we'll be able to progress a little bit as the weeks go. If you're new to yoga, uh, I recommend you practice yoga on an empty stomach. We do some things that are sort of upside down, so you don't want to eat a big meal and then do a practice. Uh, it's, you always want to do yoga uh, with your bare feet. Your shoes are off. If you can, you want a yoga mat. If you don't have a yoga mat, you know, they're pretty inexpensive to get these days, but if you don't have one, for much of the class, you could do simply on a non-slip surface, like on a wood floor, but also on a, on a carpet or anything you can, you can put a towel down. Um, comfortable clothes that you can move in. And the most important thing for yoga, and I've been doing this for a long time at this point, the most important thing is to continue to pay attention um, and to truly go at your own pace and only do any movement with uh, precision, with care, and that feels right to you. Things can get moving quickly, things can go fast. You wanna just make sure that every movement that you take, every breath that you take in this practice is uh, for your own healing and to make you feel better. So you don't try to do anything that doesn't feel right. Okay, so let's get started. You wanna just come to a nice, comfortable, easy seated position, whatever feels right to you. Sit up nice and tall. And then take a moment and allow your eyes to close. Just take a few deep breaths, allowing whatever you've been doing to just come to a pause. Whatever has been going on for you this week, whatever is going on for you today, we're just gonna take one precious hour together to pause everything, to take care of ourselves, to put on our own oxygen mask first. Set your intention that whatever goes on at this practice, uh, you'll keep bringing your attention, your mind back to what you're doing now. So your mind will drift to things you need to do. Just continue to bring your attention back to you and taking care of yourself. The better at this we get, the better we'll be at everything we do. In and out through the nose. Great, and then when you're ready, allow your eyes to open. We're just gonna interlace the fingers, turn the arms inside out, take your arms up over your head. Exhale, squeeze your arms straight. And then we're just gonna do a few of these. Inhale, open the elbows out to the side. Exhale, squeeze the arms straight. We'll do two more of those. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, and exhale, last one, inhaling, and exhaling.
Great, release your arms down, relace your fingers. So whatever thumb was on top, do the other thumb on top. And we'll do it again. So you start with a long exhale to squeeze them straight. And I'm gonna just let you go at your own pace for a moment here. So you inhale, bend, and you exhale, squeeze. And I encourage you to do this when you're seated at your desk or you're in the middle of a day or you're, you know, been working on a paper or studying for something. This is a good, just a nice steady break you can do while you're sitting in a chair. Let's do a last squeeze, exhale the arms up. And then you're gonna release the arms and we're just gonna tilt the body all the way over to the side here. So you're tilting all the way over to your left. Let the chest open up and you can allow the arm to bend or you can squeeze it straight. Sometimes I'll round a little forward, sometimes I'll round a little back. Just find a tight sticky spot and try to clear it out. And then come all, all the way up and we'll get that twist, that stretch on the other side. Move the stretch around a little bit until you find the spot where you really need it. And then come all the way up. And then whatever, you've got one foot that's either on top or in front. So whichever one it is, you're just gonna switch legs. So you wanna, so that we'll be balanced. Now I'm gonna put my right foot on top. Um, and then go ahead and let's go into the side stretch again. So. Once I do this the second time, usually I'm able to get a little bit lower with it. So sometimes I can get down onto my elbow. Sometimes I don't wanna go to my elbow. So you sort of feel out what's gonna feel right to you there. And then come all the way up. And then we'll go over to the other side. I was feeling a little bit more open on the second time. and then release and come back up. We're just gonna do a nice, easy seated twist. So I'm gonna go ahead and twist over to my left side and I'm just taking a hold of whatever I can grab here. So take a hold with your hands and then when you twist, you wanna inhale, lift your chest way up and then you gently twist. So as you're twisting in every twist, the breathing pattern is you wanna inhale, get a little taller Exhale, twist a little more. Your mouth is closed. Take two or three more breaths. Great, and then release that twist slowly, and we'll take that over to the other side. Oh, this feels good. Great, and then release. Okay, good. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and roll over onto our hands and knees, onto hands and knees. Great, so when you come onto hands and knees, you wanna have your fingers pointing forward best you can. Hands are under the shoulders, shoulder distance apart. Your knees are under your hips. We're gonna do a very simple pose. Many of you would know this, it's called cat-cow. So you're gonna lift your chest up, your sit bones up, almost arching your back on the inhale. And then exhale, you'll do the opposite. You're gonna round your back. So I push through my hands, I push through my shins, drop my head, pull the belly in, round back. Inhale, lift the heart up. And exhale, round the spine. Just getting with our breath. Movement doesn't need to be a big deal, right? Just with the breath. Inhale. And then round the back. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Great, and then go ahead and sit back on your heels into a 
uh, like a kneeling position. We call this Vajrasana. So as we go, I have a couple of yoga props here. I've got a strap in case I need it. I'll show you later if I need to use anything. And I've also got a yoga block, which might be helpful to you in some instances. If you don't have a yoga block, you can always use a book or a pillow or something. Some of you might need this to, uh, you know, if you want, if you're not comfortable sitting in a kneeling position, you can sit up on a, a block like this it can be very helpful if you want just for comfort. We're going to do a couple of shoulder stretches here, if you're spending a lot of time at your desk. So the first one, you're going to take your right arm up over your head, and then you're just going to simply bend at your right elbow. It's almost like you're trying to, with your right hand, sort of pat yourself on the back. So I sort of go like this. And when I do that, I right away feel a stretch right here in the back of the arm. So I'm going to perhaps take that left arm, pull that right arm in towards the midline, and then sort of lean my head back slightly. Just be aware you don't want to be sticking these ribs out here. So keep your belly and keep your ribs in. And if you're feeling the stretch in the shoulder gently, then you're doing it right. Shoulders get very tight, very hunched over. If you're doing a lot of computer work. So this is a nice, keep lifting the chest up, way to sort of undo all of that hunching over. And then go ahead and look at me whenever I release any yoga pose, I let it go. I don't want to, I don't want to let the yoga pose go. The, the coming out of it important is coming into it, coming out of it. You want to just don't want to make sure you're snapping out of anything. Always everything just mindful, nice and easy. Let's get that left arm up and bend at the left elbow. Go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Good job so far this week. We got it. Wednesday, where we, we've made it so far. And then uh, let's just gently bring that in. And then I, I sort of use my head to press it backwards, lift my chest while keeping the belly and ribs in. So whenever you're doing yoga, first you feel a little bit of a stretch and then you want to stop right where you are. You don't move past that. When you first feel the first little bit, you pause, breathe, and try to relax everything. And we're going to release that, and we're going to release it mindfully. Great. Let's take another shoulder stretch, and I encourage you to do these throughout the day. Just have them become part of your vocabulary that you do to move around. You can share these with friends. Hey, learn this yoga stretch and, and pass it around. It's, it's, it's good for everybody. The more people that know it, it helps remind us to do it. This one's called the eagle. So you're going to take your right arm up in front of your face until it makes like a sort of an L-shaped uh, position here, 90 degree angle. And then I'm going to take my left arm underneath. I take it in front. Ultimately, you want to get your palms to touch like this. Now, if that doesn't work for you, no big deal. Just go ahead and grab and pull that whole thing across your body like this. That's kind of the modification. Or if you're able to grab the hands, again, you don't want to be hunched over. You want to lift up, lift the arms up, pull it away from your face slightly. And then everyone just where wherever you are slightly, ever so slightly, drop your chin down, close your eyes, soften your jaw. So again, the routine is this, you find a little bit of stretch, you don't blast past it, you feel a stretch, relax, and send breath to the place that is stretching. Open your eyes and then again, the routine is once you're then done with that stretch, releasing it, every single movement you make is important. Okay. Side two, take your left arm up in that L-shaped position. You're gonna take the arm underneath, in front, and maybe around. And again, if that doesn't work for you, you take the arm all the way across the body. And you should just feel a nice stretch in the back of the shoulder. So I do this one a lot, so I'm flexible here. So again, when you approach a stretch, feel the first little pull. You don't, you don't yank past the pull. 
first little pull. Great, I feel a stretch. Uh, start to relax everything. Start to deepen your breath. And then you start to get good at relaxing on command. That is what we're trying to learn here. Okay, and then release the arms. Nice, let's do a few shoulder rolls just to move that out. Shoulders are going up, back and around. Shoulder rolls also something I do at least five or 10 times throughout the day. Let's roll the other direction. I'm ever waiting in line for something, I'm waiting in line to, you know, buy a cup of coffee or tea or juice or something. I'll just do some shoulder rolls like this, feels good. And while we're here, we could do a few neck rolls. So just take your head up, down, around a couple times. Very gently with the neck rolls. And then let's get that on the other side. Okay. And then bring it back to the center. I'm going to just ditch my block here and then I'm I'm gonna walk my hands back into the hands and knees position. Great, so on the hands and knees position, we're just gonna get a little stabilization here. I'm gonna take your right arm forward in front of you and just take a moment to feel your new center of gravity while only on three positions. Um, go ahead and pull that belly in to sort of stabilize you here for a moment and then release your right hand down and then we're gonna get that left arm forward and just notice how your body just immediately knows how to find its own kind of new center of gravity here. And then release that hand down. And then you're going to take your right leg back behind you. So I usually curl my toes under like this and then I slide my leg back. Let's see if I can get myself into a better spot on the mat here. Slide my leg back like this and I start before I do anything else, I pull my belly in and I sort of firm everything. Some of you, this will be enough. And then some of you wanna go ahead and lift your leg up off the ground here. So getting a sense of, again, how it feels to just be on sort of three uh, little stabilizers and then release your right leg down. Now I'm gonna do it with my left foot. I curl the toes under, I slide back. And for what we're gonna do next, many of you will just wanna be here. Again, you don't need to do anything big and crazy for yoga. You just wanna do a little bit so you're waking things up. So then if you want to, you take your left leg up off the floor and feel yourself on those three stabilizers, my little tripod, and then release down. Okay, great. So now we're gonna add on a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my right arm forward and up as I just did before. I'm gonna take my left foot, slide it back here. Again, this may be enough for you. If you're ready, you go ahead and lift your left leg up off the floor. You don't wanna sag in the middle here. Your belly is pulling in and up and then really reach out through the fingers and toes so you're getting a little longer and then release everything down great let's get it on side two so you'll take your left arm forward stabilize get nice and strong and then curl your right toes under slide that back nice strong right leg and then lift your right leg up belly pulls in and breathe Good. Doing these isometric works, it really wakes us up as sort of if we've been uh, spacing out or whatever, it really brings us back to the moment. So it's really nice for stress reduction in that way. It kind of brings us here. And you're going to curl the toes under. We're going to take a pose called downward facing dog. So again, I'm nice and heavy in the hands. Curl my toes under. I lift my hips up, but then I shift my whole body weight back. So my hips are pulling up, back, and away from my hands. And then usually I end up stepping my feet back a little bit. And then I try pedaling my legs. So I'll go for squeezing my right leg a little straighter with my left knee bent. And then I'll switch sides. My left leg is straight, then the right leg. And I kind of go back and forth like this. Once you're ready, you want to feel comfortable to let your head drop. 
and release the back of the neck. And in this downward facing dog position, you wanna be feeling the pressure of your body on the inner edges of your hands. So if you're flopping to the outer edges of the hands, try pressing to the inner edges. Great, and then come down to your hands and knees again. Okay, so from here we're gonna move into what I call a, uh, a high, a supported high lunge. So nice and easy, I just wanna do easy with you guys on this first day. You're gonna take your right leg and you're just gonna bring it all the way forward in between your hands. I like coming up on my fingertips here. I'm gonna curl my back toes under and squeeze my back leg straight. So for this high lunge, I've got my ankle right below my knees. This is making a, basically a 90 degree angle. I sink down a little bit and then it's almost like I try to pull the mat apart with my feet. So my right foot is pulling the mat forward. My left foot is pulling the mat backwards. I pull my chest forward so everything activates. Great, we're just doing the easy version of this to start, right? So bring the back knee down to the floor, front foot is gonna meet the back, and we're simply switching sides. So that's uh, it, take that left foot forward, up on the fingertips, curl your back toes under, and squeeze your back leg straight. Great, so this is usually pretty good for most people up on the fingertips, pull the chest forward, and then the movement is my left foot, pulls forward, my back foot pulls back. And when I do that, I feel the muscles in my legs sort of wake up. Great, and then release down and release back to both of your knees. Great, go ahead and sit back on your heels and take a break here. Okay, good. So that's a nice way to kind of go. We're gonna be building on these lunges as we go. Know that you can always just repeat that lunge, what we just did. That's kind of a basic high lunge with the hands down. So now we're gonna do again a downward facing dog. So curl your toes under and press back to downward facing dog. So now I'm gonna teach you how to go in and out of the lunge from downward dog. So. You're gonna bring your feet together and take your right foot up to the ceiling, but this, just keep your hips level so your right toes are pointing to the floor. Right now my body is pulled way back, and then I'm gonna do one fell swoop, look up at the hands, and the right foot is gonna sweep to the hands, and I'm balanced on the back toes. So I'm in that high lunge that I just taught you all, right? So you can stay here, or if you want, keep your hips down, Keep your left fingertips down and take your right hand up to the sky. So if you're not really sure rights and lefts, just look at me and just kind of follow along best you can. There's a nice open twist here. Anything I start to teach you, remember you can always go back to the easier version. You're gonna bring the hand down to the floor and we're gonna step back to downward facing dog. And downward facing dog is a post posture that we do a lot of, so you wanna get familiar with it. Um, outer edges of your upper arms, you wanna think of them sort of squeezing in and together. Let's get side two, bring your feet together. You're gonna to take that left foot to the ceiling. Your hips are level, your left toes point to the floor. First, I pull my body weight way back and then one fell swoop, I lean my body weight forward and I swing the foot forward all in one. Now, if you come here and you sort of get stuck, you can grab onto the foot and yank it forward. It's not that graceful, but it does get the job done, right? So you wanna sink your hips down, pull the chest forward, and then we're gonna move into that twist again, optional moving into the twist. and then release your hand to the floor and step back to downward facing dog. Now from downward facing dog, we're gonna move into a pose called plank, which is the top of a push-up position. So instead of having my body weight back here in dog, 
I lean my body weight forward. It's much harder on the arms, right? So my body, like you don't want to sink down like this. You pull your belly in, kind of scoop your tailbone down. So your body is making a straight line. And this is a difficult position. So if you don't like this, you can just drop your knees to the floor, but it's not hands and knees, right? So the knees would be a little bit further back and you would be leaning forward into plank. Great, so plank pose, back to down dog. Let's do that with your breathing just a couple times so you get a sense of the shifting of your body weight. So everybody inhale into plank, exhale into down dog. Inhale plank, exhale down dog. Inhale, plank. Exhale, down dog. And this time, inhale into plank. And I'm gonna try to just drop the knees. And um, you're gonna go straight down to the floor. So you want to imagine your chest is going in between your hands. So now we're down here on our belly. And I'm gonna have you take your arms down by your sides. You're gonna push your, um, Belly in, tailbone down, arms are down by the side. Lift your shoulders up and back and lift up into what we call a locust position. So I'm doing this version with my hands touching, shoulders back. I'm just essentially waking up the muscles in the upper back. And then release. Great. Do a little bit more of waking up the back muscles. So take your arms now in front of you like so. Great, and just like we did on hands and knees, you're feeling your belly and tailbone down, get nice and grounded here. Just try this, just lift your right hand up off the floor. And then release it down. Take that left hand up off the floor and lift it down. Lift your right leg up off the floor and release it down. Left leg up off the floor and release it down. I have a feeling you guys know where we're going with this. Okay, so now you're gonna lift up your right arm and left leg up off the floor. Let's hold it a couple breaths. These are sort of, again, designed to slightly confuse the mind and bring you back here to the moment and release it down. And now left arm and right leg, lift them up. And then release it down, wonderful. Okay, hands under the shoulders. Go ahead and press yourself all the way back to downward facing dog. When you get to that down dog position, go to that pedaling of the legs routine that you've already down a few times, and then let your head and neck have a little shake. Okay, we're just gonna shift gears here. Take your feet a little, little bit wider apart. You're gonna walk now your hands back towards your feet. So now I'm leaning into my legs. Bend your knees quite a bit. Each hand is gonna grab onto an elbow. Let your head hang here. We're going to be here for several breaths. You can actually let your eyes close, let your head hang, and take a couple long breaths. And I usually do this, I shake my head no. And then I'll do this, I'll like nod my head yes. And just try to get the tension out of the back of the neck. Great. Okay, so we're gonna move on. So bring your attention up here. You're going to um, bring your hand, this is almost like a, the cat-cow position that we did earlier. You're gonna bring your hands onto your shins, just below your knees. You're gonna push into your shins. I always keep my knees a little bit bent. Straighten my arms, inhale, lift my chest forward. So that's an inhale. And then exhale, slide my hands all the way down and let the head drop, great. We're gonna do that again. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale. And exhale. Again, inhale. Come high up, make an offering of the chest, and then exhale, full bow the head. Great, okay. And then from here, little bend in the knees, hands to your hips, shoulders back, lead with the chest, come all the way up to standing. Okay, great. So we're gonna put some of that all together. We're gonna do uh, what I call half sun salutes or artistry and namaskara. So come to the front of your mat now. Okay, I'm gonna start with my feet pretty, uh, pretty wide apart. My knees always a little bent. Take a moment, now we're finally standing up, right? Bring the palms together at your heart. Bow your head, close your eyes, and just reconnect with why this is important for you to be doing. Why is it important to pause? Just take care of yourself, move, breathe. Rededicate yourself to what you're doing now. And then when you're ready, you're gonna let your eyes open, let your hands drop. Arda uh, Suri Namaskar, Hassan Salute. Arms sweep up, inhaling. Touch your palms together, and then bend your knees slightly, take the arms out to the side, you're gonna swan dive and forward bend all the way forward and down. Like we just did, hands onto the shins. Look forward, pull your chest forward. This is your in-breath position. And then exhale, fold, slide your hands down, drop your head. We're gonna come back to standing, arms out to the sides. Inhale, all the way up, palms are gonna touch. And exhale, palms together at your heart. Let's repeat that, arms sweep up, inhaling. And exhale, fold. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, all the way up to standing, inhale, and exhale, palms to heart. Okay, we're gonna add on uh, into what I call sun salute A, modified sun salute A, arms sweep up, inhaling, and exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway up like you just did, but then this time you're gonna bring your hands to the floor and step back to that plank pose that we learned. So again, you can bring your knees to the floor if you like and lower yourself all the way to the floor or have your legs up. We did a locust pose before. Now we're gonna do what's called a baby cobra. So you're gonna slide your hands further back behind you, hug your elbows in, shrug your shoulders together. I kick my feet down to the floor, tailbone down. And I'm just coming up a little ways, right? So I can pick my hands up here still. So I'm activating the back, opening the heart, and then release, and I curl my toes under and press back to downward facing dog. So your thighs should be engaged, and it's almost as if your thighs could pull your body backwards. I've actually seen people who can do downward dog, their legs are so activated they can actually pick their hands up off the floor here, which is, is kind of hard to imagine, but you want to imagine that the body weight is back. Now you're gonna look up at your hands, step both feet up to the hands, so you take a step, step, come to that halfway position on your inhale. Exhale, you bow your body forward as you did, all the way up to standing, arms out to the sides, inhale, palms will touch, and then exhale, palms come together at the heart. Okay, that's one, here we go again, arms sweep up. Inhaling, and exhale, fold. Make an offering of the heart, really do pull that chest forward, in breath, the chest stays forward. You bend the knees, hands to the floor, step to plank, right? So before I did knees to the floor, now I'm keeping my knees off the floor, just lowering straight down. 
arms come to the sides. You can either repeat a baby cobra or you can do a little bit of a higher cobra. That's starting to feel good. And then curl your toes under, back to dog. Down dog is sort of your resting moment. So use it as a moment to close your eyes, soften your teeth and gums. Let your face muscles release. Look up at your hands. Again, step your feet up to your hands. Pull the heart forward on your in-breath. Fold deeply on the out-breath, all the way up to standing. Inhale, all the way up. When you get to the top, you want to pull that belly in, ribs in. And then exhale, you can do arms out to the sides, or sometimes I pull my hands straight down the center. That's fun too. Here we go again, arms sweep up. Inhaling. And exhale, fold. Halfway up in breath, hands to the floor, step back to plank pose. Okay, so we did before um, knees to the floor, then we did straight to the floor, and then some of you uh, want to try this. You're going to actually only lower halfway, hover, and then pull yourself up. So we call that a chaturanga upward dog position, and then back to downward dog. So those are your three sort of levels of practice. Neither is better or worse, just whatever you're in the mood for. And then look up at the hands, step the feet to the hands, pull the heart forward in breath, fold deeply out breath, all the way up to standing, inhale. And then exhale, palms to the heart. Let's just pause here and do a little um, balancing pose. So we're gonna take tree, balancing pose. You're gonna step on your right foot, spread your toes, take the left knee out to the side. You can. Just touch the heel to the inner ankle if you like, or if you want, you can bring it up a little higher or even grab onto that left foot, take it to the top of your thigh. I usually start with my hands and my heart. And then if you're ready, you take your arms up over your head and breathe. It helps if you're having trouble balancing, you look at a spot that doesn't move. Keep looking at that spot. Remember all yoga poses, you release it mindfully. It's as important as getting up into it. Okay, let's try that on the other side. So you're on your left foot, take your right knee out to the side and then you take your foot a little higher, a little higher, wherever feels comfortable for you. Palms to your heart. And then as you're ready, take your arms up. We do this to enhance your sense of concentration, right? Usually we're looking all over the place. Keeping your eyes focused helps you learn how to focus. We all are trying to learn how to focus. Okay, and then gently release it down. Wonderful, okay. I'm gonna have you step to the side, open your legs nice and wide with your toes pointing straight ahead and your legs Firm up, get them nice and squoze. Hands are gonna go to your hips. Inhale, lift your chest, and then exhale, you're gonna fold forward. And I usually start with my hands right about here. Again, if they don't, if your hands don't touch, grab onto a block or a chair or a book, stacked up book, something like that in front of you. If you like, then you can just take your hands a little bit lower, and you wanna just lower yourself as far as is comfortable for you today. And that's I have to be honest, it's really completely different for me each day. So normally I'm going a little lower, but I guess I'm not doing that today. I just have to honor that. Let your head drop. Take a couple breaths here. Okay, look forward, pull the chest forward, inhale. 
Exhale, your hands go to your hips and then lead with the chest, come all the way up to standing. Okay, so we're gonna do a few, what we call standing postures now. So they're just meant to open up your hips, make you a little stronger and help with balance. First one is triangle, it's one of my favorites. You'll take the right toes out to the right. So the right toes and the whole leg, the knee, everything is pointing to the side. And then your back foot, you wanna just pigeon toe the back foot in a little bit. Uh, these days I'm having my foot sort of be straight. I used to make it more of an angle. So you just kind of get your feet comfortable. Legs are strong. And then for triangle pose, this is important. You wanna do this with the hip. So, so right now I'm like this. Now my hips are gonna go, I, I, I hinge at the hips. I take them back. I kind of lean my whole body forward. I usually pause about here and go, all right, well, how is this feeling? Then the bottom hand, start right below your knee. That hand is gonna slide down wherever is comfortable for you today. And sometimes my hand is on the floor on the outside of my foot. Sometimes it's on my ankle. Sometimes it's closer to my knee, just not on the knee joint itself and you're good. For triangle pose, do kind of take your body weight back and then you wanna take that top arm and just reach it up best you can. If it's comfortable, you can turn and look up at the top hand. Wherever you are, steady your breath. So that your body gets the message, oh, hey, any yoga pose I do, I can trust myself. Breath is smooth and even, no problem. And the way I get out of this is I actually take my feet and I push my feet down to bring myself back up. Great, let's get that on the other side. So I'll take that front foot in and I'm gonna take the back foot out. So you want your knee sort of pointing in between your second and third toes, something like that. Get comfortable in your legs and then do that thing where you shift the hips. It's actually such a great feeling. It's almost relaxes it and I'm kind of pulling my belly in and scooping in as I go. And then I'm already here and oh, my hand just kind of naturally goes wherever it does. And then I'm gonna take that top arm up into whatever version of triangle you're doing today. The main thing I really want you guys to get from this first class is the way we approach any yoga pose, which is you approach it carefully, you feel your first bit, and then pause and make sure you're not gripping. You want to soften and breathe. And then whenever you come out of any pose, you come out of it mindfully. So just pay attention, press down through the feet, and coming up is nice and easy, no problem. Okay, we're gonna get the feet set back up on the first side. So I'm gonna take the right toes out, the back toes in, and this time I'm gonna take a little bit more space in between my feet. Uh, so just a little bit wider apart. I'm gonna start with my arms out to the side. Now, last time we did triangle, I did a big this movement. This we're not gonna do that. You're just gonna kind of keep your hips level as they are, keep your chest lifted as much as is possible. And then you just sort of bend your front knee, just make sure that the knee's not clunking forward, right? Knee is gonna go straight over that second and third toe. And this is what we call a warrior, uh, second warrior, warrior two position. Belly in and ribs in to support you and a nice strong back leg. So I used to be really fierce about getting as low as I could and I made it a big competition with myself. The main thing is to allow the hips to open, feel the strength of your legs. But again, what's most important is not to grip, not to tense up, all right? We do that all day long. So soft jaw and smooth breath. And then straighten the front leg and release your arms. Okay, let's go over to side two. Nice, strong legs, inhale, and then exhale. Sink yourself into a comfortable warrior two pose. One of the things when I first started yoga, I was so eager to do it correctly and I was trying so hard to follow directions. 
I ended up getting very tense in my yoga. I was like, wow, I'm totally stressing out about my yoga. <laughs> so my feeling is we would all have enough stress. You want to do whatever position you can and then see what, like, what parts of your body can stay relaxed. Like my legs are working like crazy, but I have a nice soft jaw, easy shoulders, smooth, easy breath. And then come on up. Okay, last one. We're going to go back to side one. So this is back over your right leg, back leg is strong. We're basically putting those two poses together. You're gonna bend the front knee like you just did for warrior two, but you're gonna take your hips back like you did for triangle, come onto your forearm, and then just take the other arm up over your head. So you can go straight up, or you can take it up over your head like so. You wanna sink into the hips, lift up out of the bottom shoulder. Nice side stretch pose, breathing. Great, come all the way up and release, last side, okay. And then we'll bend that front knee, take the hips back, sink down all the way up and over, or straight up, however it feels right to you. And again, you're lifting up out of that bottom shoulder. Great, press down through the leg, come all the way up. You're gonna bring your feet back to the parallel position, your legs back to straight. Lift your chest on the inhale, and just like we did before, you're gonna fold your body forward and down. Uh, but this time, go ahead and take your um, left hand directly in front of your face, so not behind in between your feet, but in between your, right under your face. Lean into that hand, and then go ahead and take a twist. So then take your uh, left arm up. You've got your right hand down and your left arm up into a twist. If you want to deepen that twist, you can reach over and grab the outside of the foot. Maybe take the top arm back behind you. And then release. Let's get that on the other side. So you're taking your uh, left arm under your face. Right arm is going up. And then maybe into the other variation. Release whatever you're doing, come back down the middle. Dropping your head. Allow your eyes to close. Okay, look forward, pull the chest forward, inhale. Hands are gonna come to the hips, exhale, inhale, come all the way up to standing. Great job. And then we're gonna bring the feet together and then come back to the front of your mat. Okay, wonderful. So we're gonna take a one chair pose or um, Utkatasana Thunderbolt pose. We're gonna bring your feet together, knees together, Sit your hips way back and down. Take your arms up, inhaling. And then exhale, fold your body forward and down. Drop your head straight into your legs. Great. Pull the heart forward. Inhale. And then however you are liking doing those thumb salutations, you're going to bring your hands to the floor and step back. Some of you might be in the habit of jumping back to Chaturanga and taking up dog. I'm just going straight to the floor. And I'm going to do a high cobra. You do whatever variation works for you. And then we're back to downward facing dog. Great. So from here, I'm going to have you take what I call a single pigeon pose. So you might want to take a block or a cushion for this. Uh, I'll show you how I do it. I'm going to take my right knee up to the right corner of my mat. And I have my leg 
in about a 45 degree angle here. So I'm not clunked over to the side on my tush here. I'm even here. Now, some of you, if this doesn't feel great on your knee, you can just do uh, just kind of a seated cross leg like this, if that doesn't feel right. Um, many teachers teach this differently. Some teachers insist you've got a 90 degree angle, that feels great on them. This is the one that works for me. And if you need help, you can put a block sort of under your hip like that. Some people really enjoy that. Um, you can also put a block under your chest for what we're going to do next. We're going to start to kind of make our way down into a forward bend here. And then just relax the head forward. Now, you don't need to have a block. You can just kind of relax your body forward. In fact, I'll do that so you guys can see that that feels nice too. I'm feeling this all in this area like big time. Just don't go in too far too fast. Okay, and then come up on your hands. We, we came into this from down dog, so we want to do that symmetrically. You're going to come back to down dog, puddle out your feet, and then we'll take the left side. So I sort of take my left knee towards the left corner of my mat. I balance out my hips. Ooh. Uh, my left side is much tighter than my right, so you may notice that you're not balanced one side to the other and that's why we all come to our yoga practice because we're out of balance and we come here to find balance right so don't push or yank that just honor wherever it is Okay, fantastic. Bring the hands to the floor and we'll come out as we went in and down dog. And then once again, I'm going to have you guys uh, bring the knees to the floor and sit back on your heels. We're going to do uh, one of my favorite poses now, Ardha Ustrasana or half camel pose. So you're going to come up onto your shins and if you need padding under your knees, you can just fold your mat over or grab the towel or something. So you've got a couple of choices here. Uh, you can put your hand right here on your hip if you like. I'm going to curl my back toes under. Uh, but you can also go for a flat foot, whichever you like. Um, you're going to reach back with one hand like this. It's belly and tailbone down, hips are forward. Reach back with one hand and then take the opposite hand straight back up over your head and lift your chest way up, dunking your head back. And then come on up and release. Let's get that other side. Hand can go to the hip or to the heel or to the flat foot. Reach up and back into Ardha Ustrasana, half camel. And then come all the way up and then release. Great, I'm just gonna cross my feet. I can sit my hips back. I'm gonna take a, um, a bound angle pose. So this is a cobbler's pose. We bring the feet together, the knees open, right? And I'm just gonna take my feet like a little bit away, not all the way in. Great, and then I'm gently gonna lift my chest forward and ease my way down here. So you don't wanna round back, you wanna keep a nice long spine. I just want to, in case you remember nothing else, for I want, this is what I'd love for you guys to take with you, is 
not like what yoga you're doing, but how you do it. So again, the thing to remember is that you approach the pose and you start to feel a sensation. And instead of tensing up or pushing past the sensation, when you feel that first sensation, you go, oh, that's enough. Relax everything that can be relaxed. Smooth out the breath. And then if possible, take a moment to close your eyes and pause. Every time you do a yoga pose, it's an opportunity to release some tension, connect with the breath, and focus the mind. Allow your eyes to open, come up slowly. See where we're fixed for time here. Okay, come all the way onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest. So we're gonna do one final twist and then we're gonna rest. Bring both knees into your chest and just whichever side you want to, take both knees over to one side, look to the opposite side, stretch your arm out, look out over that opposite shoulder and take a few deep breaths just to give your back a little bit of relief. I usually do this twist first thing when I wake up in the morning. Bring both knees back up into your chest. And then let's get that twist on the other side. Go ahead and tip the knees over. And I look to the opposite direction. And approach the pose. Soften whatever you can. Close your eyes if you can and breathe every pause. And then every pause, come out mindfully to open your eyes and pay attention on the way up. Great. Now I'm gonna have you guys come into perhaps everybody's all time favorite pose. It's called Shavasana or your final relaxation pose. So you hug your knees in and you want to stretch your legs all the way flat down on the floor and allow your feet and legs to flop open. And then you want to take your arms out to the sides, palms face up. Move your face and jaw muscles around a couple of times and then allow your eyes to close. I'm going to move to sitting, but please stay here in this relaxation pose. In this relaxation pose with your eyes closed, take a nice deep breath in through your nose and then let it out through the mouth. Allow your eyes to close. Let your breath come back to a natural rhythm. And then you approach this pose the way you approach all, all yoga poses. Get into the pose. See what you can relax. Close your eyes and breathe. See what pieces of you you can relax. Now, in a normal setting, we would have you here for several minutes. This pose is considered quintessential because it allows all of the work that you've done to 
settle in to soak in and take effect. This final relaxation pose, it's almost like clicking save on the work you've done on the computer. So I'm going to invite you to stay here and rest for some time. I want to thank you so much for joining me for this hour. I will be back next week. Um, you can feel free to email me any questions. You can just simply go to the Yoga USC website, email me questions about our work this afternoon, or if you have injuries or specific yoga questions or requests or anything that you like. Uh, we now have a home for yoga at the university, and we wanna make sure that we help everyone we can. Uh, this class is open to everyone, so if you enjoyed it, please share this link with your friends. Please let everyone know that they can come and, and sign up. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the open hearts and the sense of adventure this afternoon. Namaste.